Our next candidate, meet Shirley. She's in her early teens. She's incredibly smart, very pretty, and she enjoys words like sabotage, circumstantial evidence. Shirley's a child genius, a little on the stubborn side, and spends long hours secretly working on her findings and experiments. Computer, do you have a match for Shirley? We have a match. Dexter from Dexter's Lab. Oh, I think they'll be happy together. The Adventures of Shirley Holmes, Sundays at 7.30. Keep it clear! <laughs> Did you grow up in Canada? Were you alive in the 90s? Did you love YTV? Fuck yeah, you did! Something I, something I noticed, I was looking at my notes uh, when watching the show, and, I'm, <laughs> and I realized that despite the fact you didn't ever wear the hat, they made you wear a lot of hats. Like, yep. like the 90s was... An interesting period in time. What people were doing to their hair in the 80s seemed to manifest <laughs> into the hat wear they would wear in the 90s. The, it's true. Yeah. I never thought of that. But it definitely became a trademark of Shirley. Like, I knew that if I left the house wearing a hat, uh, I would be 10 times more likely to be recognized by people. Um, and, and I came to love the hats as much as they made my forehead itch like fucking crazy, especially on the hot days. Like, whoo, in Winnipeg. The summer can can be nice and hot, um, but yeah, the, it's it's ironic because Shirley always had such an interesting wardrobe, which I think was a great part of her. But also one of the only big fights that I ever had on set, um, and I actually sat in my trailer and I was like, I am not going on set until this is rectified because it was um, it was like the middle of the summer, so fucking hot, and they had me. Shirley often wore like sarongs, but like wrapped across or vests with a shirt underneath. And I swear to God, this was like the hottest day in the summertime. And they put me in like a shirt underneath, a vest on top, then a belt, and then a sash over top and full length pants with like, you know, the, the usual worker boots kind of thing that she often wore when she was scouting shit out. Um, and then a hat on top of it. And like, I tried it, I put it on and I went outside and I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> this is not, I am going to faint and this is ridiculous. <laughs> I can't, I love you, Shirley, but you're not an idiot. <laughs> you would be better prepared for this weather. Um, and so, yeah, I think it was Kim Todd who eventually came in and chatted with me and I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. Can we just take off one, one vest, one shirt, one thing, one hat? I don't care. And they, they gave it to me, thankfully. <laughs> So I didn't die. It was good. <laughs> it's not going to work. Let's go. Any crazy behind the scenes stuff ever happened that the fans don't know about? Because Canada sucks. We don't make special features <laughs> about any of our stuff. And this whole show came together because I wanted to know things and there was no way of knowing it. So mm. it, tell me something Wikipedia doesn't know about the show. Besides, besides this hat fight <laughs> that you... Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, I hated my backpack. Okay. That thing. So, like, me and me and Dougie, uh, Mark Stratton, who was the, one of the props people, uh, nicknamed Dougie, uh, we always talked about having a, bon a backpack bonfire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just because it was just such a pain in the ass. We always had to remember it and always carried it around again on the hot days, blah, 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 blah. And it was also the running joke of, like, it was the magical backpack where it was, like, whatever case she was on, oh, she has... Not just her fingerprinting kit, but exactly this specific tool that she needs for this specific information. So that was one. Uh, another one, oh, we had some good pranks going on on set. John and I filled each other's trailers with uh, balloons okay. <laughs> a couple of times. I had a face in the pie fight with Dougie, the props guy. He was like my best friend on set, um, you know, where uh, I once lured him to my trailer um, because by saying that I was upset and he came and the door opened and I put in a, a whipped cream pie and then he got me on the, one of the last days actually with it too. Um, so I have some great pictures of us just covered in whipped cream. Um, gosh, what else? I mean, there's a lot of stories I, I can't tell. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You know, the nature of a show with teenagers growing of it, coming of age. <laughs> That's true. Um, but no, it was, there was a lot of fun. I mean, it was really great cast, you know, Sarah Ezer as Molly and Nico Bonswin, um, Brendan Fletcher, Blair Slater, John, we all got along so well that it was, it was, it just, it, there was so much that felt like summer camp. And of course there were the ongoing crushes in between. Like I, I had a crush on John for a while and then I had a crush on Blair 
You had a crush on Blair? Awesome. <laughs> One for the nerds, people. One for the nerds. <laughs> Woo! So it was, uh, yeah, it was like a combination of summer camp with school and, you know, uh, you know, there was a, a lot of fighting over school, the school hours. Um, but that's union stuff. So that's not really fun stories. I, I, I'm guessing you guys were a little harder to handle once you guys were turning 16, as opposed to being the 12 year olds who are just like misty eyed on a set for the first time and just being like, oh, wow, it's all so new. And then when you're 16, I'm like, I'm not going to wear this fucking vest. I'd say the boys probably got a little bit more rambunctious. <laughs> by the end but you know they have testosterone to blame <laughs> and puberty yeah exactly no they were really great on set they, they they worked really hard to to try and keep us happy and 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 listen to our input for the most part there were some people who were like ah you should be happy that you have a job at 15 which is like what that's not so that means i should put up with being treated badly i, I don't think that's good philosophy mm -hmm. um <laughs> but for the most part it was pretty awesome so there wasn't there wasn't much to rebel against although john did start driving people crazy when I remember there were a few times where we are like, okay, we're all sound. Shit. Where's John? <laughs> <laughs> they did say action and he's supposed to walk in the camera and they're like, pause, pause. Nobody walks in. Nobody walks in. And all of a sudden they're like, shit. And of course he was off like flirting with some extras or something. <laughs> 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 Sorry, John. <laughs> did you win a Gemini award for this? I did. I was nominated twice and then won once. Awesome. So, yeah, it was pretty, I couldn't believe it. I, I, yeah, it was terrifying when it happened. Like I swear the first 10 seconds after they announced my name, well, first I was like, wait, what? <laughs> oh shit. That's me. Fuck. I gotta get up. <laughs> of course I was wearing a strapless dress. I'm like, ah, make sure my boobs aren't falling out. <laughs> and then I was terrified. I'm like, I went up there and I was like, trying to thank everybody. And I'm like, shit. What are my brothers, and my brother and sister's names? Shit, shit! <laughs> I can't forget them. Um, yeah, it was it was amazing to to go there, and it was it was fun because I was actually up against in that the year that I won Corey Sevier, who is a Canadian actor, and you know he did Lassie, the Canadian version of Lassie, and and uh, he was competition, and it was it was pretty amazing to like see him and see everybody in the industry, and really kind of feel like oh shit, I you know I kind of made it a little, you know, on the Canadian scene, but you know, I'm not going to the Oscars next year necessarily, but holy shit, that's, it was, it was pretty powerful to, you know, cause we knew the fans liked it, but it was, it was cool to have the industry go, Hey, good, good job. <laughs> How long did it take you guys to realize that the show is actually taking off? Like, cause you know, like I said, in, in America, it's just like brand new show, Shirley Hobbs, <laughs> awesome hit single. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, I remember... Bo actually, and Shirley, will they, won't they? Find <laughs> out this Saturday. Hey, you've got a good side career there for, yeah. for those announcements. <laughs> yeah. um, I remember, actually, specifically, <laughs> there were two occasions that made me kind of go like, whoa. Mm. Um, the first one was uh, when we were shooting. This was the second season. I remember there was like a group of people who realized that we were shooting and some kids who kind of came to watch, which often happened, you know, it happens anywhere, regardless, you know, if you're shooting a tampon commercial, people are like, Hey, what you doing? Um, and, uh, but I remember, uh, I wasn't ready to go on set yet, or I had to go back and change. And a bunch of the kids followed. And of course we're staying a respectful distance, but they wanted me to come out and sign autographs. And so they started chanting, surely, surely, surely. So there was like a group of 10 or 15 kids on the street in Winnipeg chanting surely for me to come out. And I was like, whoa, that's, that's trippy. Um, and then, uh, the one that really clinched it, um, cause that was like, it was easy to go, oh, well it's Winnipeg. So people know we're shooting and you know, they're on set and feeling the magic. But when I went back home and we had a, I was at school and we had a track meet from another school coming in and I was like volunteering or something like that. And I had to, when people, word got round that I was there um, and it was a cold day, I was signing autographs for like 45 minutes to the point where my hands like were numb and like it was, there was no end in sight. So I actually was like, I have to go to the bathroom and I had to run away and I hid <laughs> in the boys' washroom <laughs> so I could warm up my hands. And that's when I was like, holy fuck, <laughs> this is a thing now. 
because this is Ottawa, <laughs> which is not, you know, has nothing really TV film related, nothing. It wasn't a, it wasn't a Shirley convention or anything. It was just some random elementary school kids who were like, oh, my God, it's Shirley Holmes. <laughs> So oh, that's Me- when I was. Meanwhile, okay. in 2019 on Twitter, they'd be like, that bitch left us. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, actually. Yeah. I want everybody to give a great big warm welcome to our newest star, Shania Twain. I've been trying to see this movie for fucking years and I look in the IMDb and there and I'm like, Shirley Holmes played fucking Shania Twain. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you are the most Canadian human being I fucking know. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about that process because then I look on Wikipedia and it said that you sang and play guitar in it too. The process was amazing and weird. Mm. Like I auditioned for it and then didn't hear for like, goodness, six months or something. Okay. So, okay. You know, I didn't get it. Um, Cause it's funny. I actually started singing um, around the same time as I started taking like drama classes. Um, and so, and my family are all singers, and uh, so I have a huge background in singing. But ironically, I'm also the youngest of four, and they were all really strong and decided to become musicians. So I created this huge inferiority complex when it came to my voice. And so I was actually kind of glad when I didn't hear anything back. Like, it was, it was double, where I was like, oh, that would have been a really cool project, but phew, I wasn't going to fuck it up. <laughs> um and then they called me back and I ended up getting it. And it was just a whirlwind um, because, you know, unlike the American productions where, you know, people have six months of research and, you know, you get to meet the person or, you know, talk to 20 people who knew her, knew them or, um, uh, although I did have great vocal lessons from uh, Elaine Overholt. Um, it was, uh, it was still a whirlwind of trying to, you know, smash some confidence into myself before <laughs> we had to do the actual film. Cause yeah, we did all the music was uh, live. No, it was, it was the most amazing experience in terms of growth for myself and my confidence and the ability to, to grow as a person and a, a performer. Um, because through the vocal lessons, I was able to realize how many limitations I was putting on myself just through my nervousness and my fear of, of sucking or not being good enough or people criticizing, going, oh, wait, she, she wavered on that note. Uh-oh, she sucks. So did you have Paula, Simon, and Randy in your voice at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they've got nothing on my voice, man. Okay. <laughs> the voice inside my head, you know, they might not be as clever or as quippy, but uh, yeah, something like that. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did I ever tell you you're my hero? You're everything, everything. I wish I could be. Oh, I, I can fly higher than a needle. You are the What was your favorite part, I guess, about filming that movie? Like, what's what's that scene that you look back on and say, "Fucking nailed it, Mike you up. <laughs> you just you just got twained. Bang. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think for me, uh, it was probably the scene where I'm at my 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 parents' funeral, and my boyfriend. Uh, portrayed by Daryl Dennis, a fabulous uh, Canadian actor, mm. um, says that he has to leave the funeral. And there's just this moment where Eileen is just, it just registers in her mind that this is not a thing. He's not here. He's not what I need. Um, and, you know, there were a lot of moments of, like that for her in, in the film. And, for me, I just, I felt it was really powerful. Like whether I, I necessarily nailed it or not, I, uh, like my, my, there's no words when he says I have to leave. Mm-hmm. She just kind of registers the information and you just kind of, she just goes, okay. And there's this interchange between me and, and Daryl, uh, where we both kind of silently, silently understand that this is the end of, you know, a loving relationship. Wow. So, yeah. 
Mutt. This is Shania Twain there. This is Mutt Lang. Mutt? Uh, yeah, Mutt. It's a nickname. God, I hope so. This is Shania. Yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of yours. <laughs> Thanks. Go buy another album. Uh, yeah, well, actually, I wanted to talk to you about your next album. I heard you were looking for a producer. Yeah, I am. Do you know somebody? Do you have a message for the fans before we go? I love you guys. Honestly, I mean, we had no idea what the show was going to be when we first started it. And you guys, you know, found it and made it big and great and made my life so much more special for you guys all being in it. And I mean, I loved how much it spawned fan fiction and a community and, you know, reaching out, a, you know, it aired in like 107 countries or 97 countries or something. I remember a friend telling me they saw me dubbed in Chinese and... Pero te imagino a ti, un joven con buena imaginación. So just connecting with so many people was, is so amazing. And I'm just so grateful that you guys liked it and stuck with us and you know, still remember us fondly because, <laughs> you know, it was, it was amazing. And a huge part of that was you guys. So thanks. Awesome. All right, Meredith, thanks so much for being on the show. This is fucking, oh man, this is, this is, uh, this is awesome. This Yay. is fantastic. The people are going to be happy. And uh, this is the fir- uh, one of the first of the new uh, string of shows I'm doing for this particular project. So thanks awesome. so much for lighting a fire under my feet and, uh, <laughs> you know, you mean your ass. I, it's my ass, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. And on that note, bye. <laughs> Check out more episodes of You, Me, and YTV on Facebook and YouTube. Sweet one-of-a-kind interviews with PJ Fresh Bill, PJ Paul, Tarzan Dan, the cast of Student Bodies, the voice acting cast of Sailor Moon, and much, much more. Exclusively on You, Me, and YTV. Season 2.